Hello, I'm Jamila Masaiva, an international social etiquette consultant and author of etiquette books. Etiquette, the least you need to know, and afternoon tea etiquette. If you would like to order my books, please make sure to email me at infojamilmasaiva.com. I'll link it down in the description box as well. If you're a new viewer on my channel, welcome. Here I talk about etiquette, soft skills, self-development, all kind of interesting topics like that. If you are curious about all of that, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you are an old viewer, welcome back. I am delighted to see you here. Today's video is dedicated to how to become more elegant. This is the kind of a topic that's often requested from me, both here on YouTube as well as on my Instagram page. I get a lot of direct messages asking me on tips on how to look and feel more elegant. So here's the video to help you become more elegant. So before I get into this topic, I want to tell that personally for me, elegance is a lot more than just the looks. And it's really, really about the looks. It's more about the aura of the person, the energy of the person, um, the overall demeanor, so to speak, the way they carry themselves into the world that make you feel like they look elegant or they gave vibe of elegance. Um, you can see a person who is elegant but might not necessarily be dressed in a typical, stereotypical, elegant way. Uh, they might be wearing something edgy but still overall carrying themselves in a very elegant manner. I'll show you a picture from one of my recent outfits that I wore that wasn't typically elegant. Um, but even if I wear that, no one thinks that I don't look elegant or I look less elegant. Uh, so, and you can see someone who is wearing something stereotypically elegant, a little black dress, high heels, maybe a hat, something that we'd consider elegant, but still they don't look so elegant. So to sum it up, elegance is more about how you act, how you carry yourself, and how you generally project an image to, to, the, to the outside world. So I'll tell you some of the tips that can help you create that image that you want. First things first, to look more elegant, you have to think elegantly. And what I mean by that is that the image you're trying to project to the world has to be in line with the thoughts in your head. So get rid of all kinds of negative thoughts that will be affecting your behavior throughout the day or will be creating certain emotions in you that to the world will not be translated as looking elegant. One of the emotions that I think or one of the thoughts that I think is crucial that you need to get rid of is feeling jealous or envious of someone, particularly women feeling envious or jealous and criticizing harshly other women. That does not help you, that doesn't make you look elegant, and that creates negative energy inside of you that then reflects, gets reflected on your face, gets reflected in your whole energy and aura. For me personally, jealousy and being envious of someone is the worst human emotion. I think it is destructive. There is no creative power in that emotion. So if you find yourself feeling somewhat jealous or envious of someone, of either their success, of their, the way they look, or something about them that you find that bugs you, instead of feeling that negative thought, try to translate it into a positive one. Instead, feel inspired, feel motivated by that person's success, looks, whatever it might be, and try to think how their example can help you improve your life because feeling jealous and envious will not destroy their life but rather will destroy you from the inside and thus that destruction will be reflected in your overall demeanor as well as your face. We all know that thoughts create emotions, emotions create actions and actions create results. So if we follow this pattern we have first to clear our thoughts, make them elegant so then our emotions could be more elegant so to speak and then our actions would be and the results of us, uh, our image projected to the society will also be elegant. Now from the point of how to think, this takes me to the second point which is how to act. As we know our thoughts dictate our actions. So when we feel jealous of someone, we might do something that will not make us look elegant like write hateful comments, criticize someone really harshly, create dramas. All these behaviors are exact opposites of what an elegant behavior would look like. However, this doesn't mean that you have to be smiling all the time, being quiet all the time, exact opposite. You have to learn to stand up for yourself, 
to draw boundaries with people that you want those boundaries with. It's interesting, I read this quote once that by loving ourselves, we show others how to love us. Or there was another quote that said, no one can put you down without your consent. So for elegant women, it's important to show that you love yourself, you have respect for your privacy, for your boundaries, and by respecting your own boundaries, you teach others how to keep them. Because at the end of the day, if you don't stand up for yourself first, no one will stand up for you. You have to learn to speak up when you need it and do it confidently. What I mean by that is that when you want to make a point that for some reason you didn't like, you have to say it confidently with a smile and end the sentence in a low pitched tone. For example, uh, if someone, for example, took your, let's bring an example of laptop, opened your laptop without your consent, you could say, I would like you not to touch my laptop without my consent. Full point, and let's add a smile. I would like you not to touch my laptop without my consent. That's it. Some women tend to end their sentence on a high pitch note, which makes it seem like they're questioning their own statement. That makes it seem like they're not confident in that statement, saying something like, I would like you not to touch my laptop. That doesn't sound like you're making an affirmation. It sounds like you're questioning your own sentence. So if you want to stand up for yourself, do it confidently and end it in a low pitch note. On this note, stay away from sarcasm and loud screaming. Learn to maintain your poisonous and calmness, especially when you're around people. The reason it makes us look elegant, it means that we can handle our emotions in public. You can feel as emotional as you need to be when you're around the people that are there to support you. But when you're in public, don't give in to those emotions that you feed in the people that are trying to get those emotions out of you. Oftentimes when someone makes, wants to make us angry, our anger is the energy they want to get from us and they feed on that energy. If they make you angry and you don't respond with anger at that moment, it means that you're not feeding them with that energy that they are there to get. So their actions would be in vain and your image would always be preserved. Along with learning how to maintain your emotions, also learn to give and accept compliments. Giving compliments is something a lot of women find easy to do. Um, we are very generous with our remarks towards other women. You're beautiful, I love your hair, I love your makeup, whatever it might be. But somehow accepting compliments is a challenge a lot of women face. And I think it's important for elegant women to learn to accept compliments generously as they are giving them without making excuses or putting down themselves in the process. So if someone says, I really like your skin, instead of saying, oh, it's new moisturizer that I bought, usually my skin doesn't look like that, you could just say, thank you so much, I really appreciate your compliment, or I really appreciate that, with a smile. If you have noticed, oftentimes when I get compliments on the YouTube channel as well as on my Instagram, I oftentimes just respond with thank you, I appreciate that, and I do respond to all the comments that I get. I do respond them on my own myself, so I read what you're writing. But it's important that you learn to accept it with gratitude without kind of find a reason to deflect it. Accept and give compliments generously. Now I've touched upon how to have elegant thoughts as well as how to act elegantly. Now get, let's get to the third part where we'll be talking about the overall look and let's get into more practical tips here. So you know that 93% of the communication to the world happens non-verbally. That means without the actual words. The actual words that we say only equate to 7% of the total communication. The rest is done through our body, the visual cues, the body language cues that we give out to the world. So given that, the first and the foremost important thing for elegant women is to always maintain a good posture. And by good posture, I mean straight posture, shoulders rolled backwards, torso out of the hips, making sure that you have relaxed arms, relax at your knees, and maintaining your, high, your head high, your chin parallel to the ground. I've done an entire video on that. Make sure to check it out. It's called deportment. There are two parts. Take a look at that and learn how to have a good posture. 
The second is to have a signature scent. I personally love to keep my signature scent a secret because I think a scent of a woman is a very intimate matter and has to be kept a secret. There is some kind of a mystery around the scent of a woman and that mysteri mysteriousness should be kept. A lot of people were writing that they think that's not true, that you have to disclose if someone asks you. I think it's a personal choice. If you want to make that choice, do it, but also to learn, learn to draw boundaries that you want to establish. So if people are really nosy and try to get the name of your signature scent, if you don't want to answer, say, it's just my personal scent and give a smile. And with that, you'll always learn to draw boundaries between what you want to share and what you don't want to share. The reason I think having a signature scent is important to creating an elegant demeanor or look is because you are going to always stand out from the rest of the crowd by the scent that you have. Especially if you've been using it for many years, even if you're not present, if someone smells that scent, they'll immediately associate it with you. Number three is have a neat and simple hair and makeup routine. The reason I urge you to do that is that first, that means that you're always going to find some time to get ready and that means it's meant to nibble in the long run. So it's not something that you only do once a week, it's something that you can incorporate into your daily life because it's not taking that much time. With finding a hairstyle that is suiting your facial features, your overall personal style, your lifestyle in general, and that overall gives you a good look, a look that is recognizable. And with the makeup, choose the one that highlights your strong features, is really quick and easy to do. So even if you only have five minutes to get ready, you can always go for that makeup routine and get it done and be out of the world looking very neat and very prepared. When I'm doing a lot of training courses on personal image and branding, I tell all my clients that some makeup is better than no makeup. We are now in this world where it's very much applauded when someone is not wearing any makeup, which is good for your skin. Your skin is relaxing, it is breathing, so to speak, and you are presenting yourself as genuine, authentic with bearing your actual skin. However, when you are out of the world to do work, you're out of the world to meet people, it's advisable to put just a little bit of makeup. You don't have to have tons of it, just a little bit that highlights your strong features and makes your face look dressed. It's almost in the same way that if we think we want to be genuine and be real ourselves putting out the world, let's just walk out in our pajamas or our loungewear and just go outside the world like that. So your face is almost like your body, that part, well, it is your body, it's part of your body, but it also needs a little bit of dressing, so to speak, a little bit of cream, uh, some lip liner or maybe lip gloss, a little bit of mascara and a little blush if you need one and step out of the world looking dressed and prepared to conquer it. I personally have experimented a lot with my makeup. I have found the one that is very easy to do. I'll maybe one day do a video on my daily makeup, but if you see a lot of my videos, I pretty much have the same kind of makeup on everyday basis, just changing colors here and there. And I like that it's easy, it's sustainable, and it always creates this image that I'm recognized by. So it's almost a signature makeup, so to speak. So find your signature makeup and your hairstyle. Number four, take very good care of your fingernails as well as your hands. No matter what kind of profession you're pursuing, be you a teacher, a doctor, an engineer, um, an economist, you might be doing a presentation, talking to clients, showing your students, your hands are always visible. Um, if you're reaching out for a handshake, it's a, a feature in our body that is often gets looked at. And the way that we project or show our hands to people, the way they look tells a lot about how we care for ourselves, what kind of self-care we're doing. So the better taken care of they are, the more the people recognize as someone who takes good care of themselves. So our hands are almost like our business cards in terms of our bodily features. So how to take good care of your hands? Make sure that you moisturize it throughout the day. So carry a hand cream with you in your bag at all times. And whenever you wash your hand, make sure to moisturize it while your hand is a little bit damp. 
If you can't do it or don't like doing it throughout the day because you don't like the sticky feeling on your hand, you can do it in the evening before going to bed. Apply really well a very rich hand cream, put some gloves on, some cotton gloves on and fall asleep like that so that your hands get moisturized throughout the night. With the nails, if you can afford getting manicure once a month or twice a month, make sure that you do that. You schedule that and put it into your calendar. If you can't do that, then buy all the necessary things that you need to get your manicure done at home by yourself. There are a lot of YouTube videos about how to get your nails done. You can, all you have to do is just clean them and have them neat. There's no need for really fancy nail polish, some kind of glitter or some kind of a design. Elegant nails are the ones that are clean, they are trimmed, free of cuticles and might have a nail polish, might not. If you like someone who likes to get nail polish on, feel free to do that. But in case if one of your nails chip, make sure that you get rid of all the nail polish on your hands. It's better to have no nail polish, clean fingers rather than a nail polish that's chipped. Number five is simplify your wardrobe and create a signature look. This is something that I recommend to all my clients is to think of your personal style or think of an image that you want to project to the world and then Think of all the kind of outfits the person that you have in your mind would probably wear. What is it that you want to say to the world without, with your presence or with your choice of fashion and clothing? Then create a wardrobe for, for a weekly basis, for a monthly basis that reflects that image that you want to create. I have done a video about actually creating your signature wardrobe. So if you haven't checked it out, make sure that you do. I share some tips there as well. I don't want to frame your mind into thinking that only a certain style can be elegant. Actually, you know, different kinds of styles can be elegant as long as the rest of your look is elegant. It's about how you think, how you act, how you carry that look that makes you look elegant. But there are some clothing items that are often associated with elegance and I'll make a video about that very soon as well. A final note that I want to share in terms of the wardrobe is that I think an elegant woman is the one that has an aware for each setting. So when you come home, make sure to change into your loungewear. When you are going into bed, make sure to change into pajamas. This is something that I've always been teaching my children as well. When they come home from school, I make them change into their housewear or loungewear. And then before they go to bed, I make them wear pajamas. This is something that you can teach your children from day, from day one or early days on. This is something that can be incorporated into their daily life, but also not just by saying to do that, but I also showing with your own example that you're the one that always changes outfits depending on a setting. Number six and a very crucial point is take good care of your shoes and take good care of them not only from the outside but also from the inside. It goes without saying that the outside should be clean because this is the final point of our look. When someone meets us for the very first time, they give us a really quick glance starting from our eyes down to the bottom and the last thing that they notice are our shoes. So our hands and our shoes as well as our hair so you can see like the outside of our body tells a lot about how we care for ourselves. And if you want to project an image of an elegant, well taken care person, you have to take a good care of your shoes. Why I say that the inside is so important is that if you happen to come to someone's home as a guest, you overall look really elegant, they might ask you to take your shoes off. And when you take your shoes off, if the insides of your shoes are not clean, it can create a really mixed feeling in the person that meets you for the very first time. I have done a video on shoe etiquette where I show how I clean the insides of my shoes, so make sure to check it out. And if you have uh, the possibility of getting a small shoe polish, make sure to have it with you. I always carry one little shoe polish with me in my bag. Number seven is pay attention to how you eat and how you drink, even when you are alone. Always serve yourself in a really nice dish or a really nice cup. This is something that I personally think comes a lot of out of self-respect. When you feel elegant, when you feel like you respect yourself, you'll always take out the good plates and the good cups to serve yourself. I am a huge fan of cups. I think I've shown a lot of them on my Instagram page. I always keep on buying new cups, but this is my new favorite. It's actually a collaboration with Miranda Kerr. 
um, and I find it very feminine and elegant. So buying this kind of items and drinking from this cup already makes me feel elegant. Also make sure that you have good table manners at home while dining, even when you are alone and no one is watching. It all comes down to self-respect. Make sure you don't stuff yourself with food, but rather dine, enjoy the food and make sure you put good food inside because whatever we put into our body gets reflected in our face, gets reflected in our outer image. So take good care of yourself. Point number eight is practice tidying skills. You can read the books of Marie Kondo. I've read a lot of her books and I find them quite useful in helping me organize. But I also do have my own system of organization. I did pick some tips from her as well. It's important that your space is clean, that you are clean not only from the inside, but also from the outside, from the space that you inhabit. Oftentimes, it's the first thing that people notice if we work in an office sharing with other people. If they see that our cabinet or our desk is clean, that creates impression of us. And elegant women are the ones that do have this clean, tidy space around them. So the first thing that you need to tidy and always make sure that it looks clean is your bag that you wear every day with you to work or wherever you go. Usually for women, that's our business cards. The way we handle our bags, the way we carry our bags speaks volumes about us. Um, it has happened to me when I was asked to look through someone's bag to get something and the insides of the bag would tell me a lot about the person and how they would take care of themselves and the items around them. So for me, it's crucial to make sure that the bag, the insides of the bag are clean and it's not cluttered. Uh, I have this daily or nightly ritual before going to bed. I've designated a drawer in my closet for the insides of my bag. I make sure I move them all there. I clean the insides of my bag and if I need to change the bag, I'll do it in the evening, um, style with whatever I'll be wearing the next day. Or if I'll be using the same bag, I discard it, clean it, uh, I get rid of the things that I don't need, like parking tickets, cinema tickets, whatever it might be, and then I organize everything back into the bag. So it's a ritual that helps me calm down, helps me create clean spaces, including my bag. Elegant women are the ones that are good conversationalists and that have a general idea about everything. So in order to do that, you have to enhance your knowledge in everything. You can use all kinds of different resources, watch movies, listen to songs, podcasts, watch videos, read books, read articles, whatever it is that will help you to keep up with the news and things that's going on in the world. As an elegant woman, it's important that you are able to handle and carry on the conversation with whoever you meet. And in order to be able to do that, you have to be well aware of everything, but that doesn't mean that you have to have deep knowledge in everything. So having an overall understanding of things going out in the world will help you to become a good conversationalist that ultimately will make you look elegant. And the final point for today is be aware of your voice as well as how you speak because oftentimes the elegance is projected through our voice. We might call someone over the phone and without even meeting us or ever seeing us in person, they might get the impression that we sound elegant, that we're a woman of elegance. The tone of the voice is very important. You have to vary the tone of your voice throughout your speech. So learn to emphasize things and learn to rush through things that are, might not be so important in your sentence. Varying the tone is important, but also making sure that you keep pauses when necessary. When there's a silence, when there's a pause, we crave for more. We want to hear more from the person. If you are someone who tends to get anxious and blabber, control it. Think or count in your head to 10. Think of something that will make you stop, reflect, and then answer. Do not rush into answering someone's question or do not rush into talking, regardless of how you feel that the person might think you're taking their time. Take your time to express yourself. Along with your speech, it's important to control your gestures. Make sure that you use your hands organically when you're talking. So incorporating gestures is important to make you look more elegant and feminine. However, overdoing the gestures might make you look like you're anxious or nervous and will not be translated into elegance. Knowing to moderately incorporate gestures into your speech is essential for looking elegant. 
I hope that you find these tips practical and useful in your journey to becoming more elegant today. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you liked it, make sure to give the thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. Thank you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!